Hi there and welcome once again. This is Jennifer McGuire and I'm very thankful you have visited today. Now in this video, I'm going to show you some ideas for creating a pop-up scene inside of your card. When the card is closed, there's a window that shows a flat scene inside, but when you open it, it pops up. I have two different examples to show you and I hope that by showing you the process of these, you'll see how easy it is and you can use it with products that you have. Okay, today I'll be using the newest Hero Arts My Monthly Hero Kit for June. I like to use these kits each month because they are a great value. The value of this kit is double the cost of it, so it's a great way to build up your stash. In this kit, we have a large cling background stamp. There's a 4x6 stamp set and coordinating dies additional dies, which I'll be using, and some other little accents in there. There's also black watercolor paper. I didn't get that to try, but I'm really excited to get it and see how it works. I also wanted to show you that that background stamp would be great for creating a northern light sky. All you have to do is some bright colors, add some dark color over it, be really cool for techniques. But today I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use it in a very basic way, but I did want to mention it. Now let me show you the other dies in here. I told you there were some standalone dies in there in addition to the coordinating dies. These are the three standalone dies and I'll be using two of these today. Notice how you can kind of build a scene with these, a background scene. They're nice and detailed, which is great because you can create a card very quickly by using these. This is the stamp set that's included in that kit. I just wanted to give you a closer look and you can see how these images go nicely with those dies and the background. Now I'll just be using a sentiment from this set and also the coordinating dies. I'll also be using this new stamp set and coordinating die set that's also available this month. Now I'm going to use the coordinating dies without the stamps, but I like the stamps too. I will use a sentiment too. Now let me show you my first card completed so you can see what direction we're headed. When it's closed from the outside, you just see a window to the inside, but when you open it, it pops up just to create a fun impression. So let's go ahead and get started with this first example and then we'll move on to another. I'm starting with a white note card that is four and a quarter by five and a half and it's side folding. I have a Hero Arts circle die that I'm going to cut from the front of the card. So it'll be a circle window towards the top center. You could use any size or shape die that you want here. After I run it through, I have my circle window. Next, I die cut pieces using some of the dies that I showed you earlier. A lighthouse, some clouds, and I used a sun coordinating die to create light that will look like it's shining from the top of the lighthouse. After I die cut those, I kind of glued them together in a floating scene, which you'll see in a little bit. Next, I wanted to do a bit of stamping in the background there. Now I'm using the background stamp that's included in the kit. However, mine is clear. If you get the kit, it will be a cling stamp. The reason I got a clear stamp for this video is Hero Arts was closed due to the virus and they hadn't made their cling stamps yet because they make them in-house. Well, now they're being made, so if you get a kit, this will be cling, which is good because that means you'll get a great impression every time. Okay, so what I'm going to do is stamp this pretend stamp onto my cardstock. And this is four and a quarter by five and a half Hero Arts cardstock. And I'm stamping with Hero Arts Unicorn White Pigment Ink. You'll notice that I taped this stamp into my Misty. I just did that so I didn't have to remove the release paper, which causes the, the plastic release paper to kind of warp. So I just taped it in there and it works just fine and I can easily remove it when I'm done. But again, if you get the kit, this will be a cling stamp. Okay, so there's a cool like northern light sky that you could do some fun inking with, but I'm just using it for an interesting sky background. Okay, so I heat set that so I wouldn't smear it, and now it's time to do that pop-up feature. For this, I have a strip of cardstock that's about a half inch wide, and then I have my little arrangement of die cuts here. I have the lighthouse glued to it. I have the little sun for the top of the lighthouse and then a cloud. Now on the bottom of this lighthouse die cut, I'm putting some strong liquid adhesive, that's Gina K Connect, and I'm gluing it to the end of my cardstock strip. This strip will allow the feature to pop up. So I'm going to trim the excess away so this will just look like water coming up to the rocks of the lighthouse. There are many ways you could use this die cut, this is just what made sense to me at the time. So I'm going to kind of cut this at a wave here so it looks more like ocean, and there you have the water leading up to it. 
And by the way, I just arranged some die cuts to be glued together here. You could have any die cuts that you want to do this pop-up feature. Okay, so now what we're going to do is create a fold on here so that it will pop up when we open it. So I'm going to do a fold right there at the end of my Lighthouse die cut. And I'm just going to reinforce that. And then I'll cut all that excess cardstock off and just leave about a half inch of a flap there. You can measure it out if you want, but I'm just going to eyeball it here. And this is what we'll glue to our card to create the pop-up. Before we glue that in place, let's finish the card itself. I'm gluing our stamped panel to the inside of the card so that it shows through when the card is closed. I also decided to stamp my greeting on the front of the card. And I'm glad I remembered it to do it at this point because it's easier to stamp before you glue the pop-up feature in the inside. I used my Hero Arts Misty Stamping Tool to stamp that, but you could definitely use an acrylic block. And that sentiment is from the My Monthly Hero Kit. To add the pop-up feature inside, I'm putting strong adhesive on this little flap here. You can use strong double-sided tape or liquid adhesive. And I'm going to put the end of the flap right up against the inside crease of the card and then close it down, making sure I like what it looks like through the window. While that dries, let's create the other half of our pop-up feature. This is a piece of cardstock that is a half inch by two and a half inches. And I'm going to score at every half inch. So the first one's at a half inch, one inch, one and a half, and two. I'm going to fold this up to form a cube. Creating a little cardstock cube like this is a very uh, frequent way to create a pop-up feature in a card. Currently, our lighthouse piece just kind of flaps open when you open up the card. This will ground it and allow it to pop up nicely. So I'm putting adhesive on one of the flaps and then wrapping the other flap around it. And then I'm gonna give that a few minutes to dry. While that little cube dries, let's go ahead and create a frame for the front of our card. I like to do one thing while another part dries. So for a frame on that window card, I have the same circle die I used to create the window and then a circle die that is one size bigger. I'm going to tape them together on a piece of silver glitter cardstock and run it through my die cut machine and that creates a nice frame. So I'll put liquid adhesive right around the outside edge of that window and pop that in place and it adds a little something interesting to the front. Okay, now my cube is dry and it's time to attach that to the back of the lighthouse. So what I do is I fold the flap over. It looks kind of bad on the back, but no one will ever see it. Now I'm going to work the cube back and forth in my fingers as you see here. And then I'll put adhesive on one side. Make sure this is strong adhesive, like Gina K Connect Liquid Adhesive or double-sided tape. And then I'll put the cube at close to the edge of our little lighthouse piece here. I'm going to put something in here to kind of press down on the inside of the cube just to make sure that it's making good contact and will dry there nicely. So after giving this a few minutes to dry, I'm going to come back and put adhesive on the top of the cube. So you can see how there's adhesive on the top, only on the top. Then I'm going to flatten it towards the inside of the card, close the card on it, and hold it there. You want to give that about five minutes to dry. And then what happens if you get, is you get this nice controlled pop-up feature inside of the card. If you wanted to see that in uh, action again, don't worry. On the next card, I'll show it again. Now I did decide that I didn't want the stamping on the bottom of the card below the lighthouse. I don't know why, I just wanted to cover up that white stamping, that's where my personal greeting will go. So I'm cutting another piece of cardstock here that will just uh, fit inside that bottom portion and I can glue it right on top. You really could leave the stamping and right on top of it, but I don't know, I just decided to add this in the inside. By the way, all the cardstocks that I'm using today are from the Hero Arts cardstock collection, but you could use anything you have. I will say that for the die cuts that you have pop up, like the lighthouse and the clouds and such, make sure that's from a heavyweight cardstock. This cardstock from Hero Arts is definitely heavyweight enough. If you feel yours is a little too lightweight, you can just die cut two of each die cuts and glue it together, and that will make it more stable. To build on the scenes, I'm adding some tiny die cut birds from the Hero Arts Cloudy Sky Scene die set. These little birds are the perfect little accent to scenes. Instead of adding gems or anything else, it's just a little pop that completes it. 
So I glued those in place and then I used my aqua shimmer pen to add a little bit of shimmer to the light coming out from the lighthouse. So here is a look at the completed card. You can see it flattens nicely to go inside an envelope. When you open it, you see the scene on the inside but have no idea that it's a pop-up card. That silver glitter frame just makes it a little more special. Then when you open the card, the scene pops up and there's plenty of room on the bottom to write your personal message. You could add more to the scene inside of the card. You could have more things pop up. I tried to go with simple designs today that were kind of monochromatic, all the same colors of cardstock, but you could color this to look realistic. The sky's the limit. Let's go ahead and create another card. This one is just a variation of the first, but I feel like the more you see this in action, the easier it is to create. Okay, with this one, I decided to use Hero, Art Blues, Hero Arts Blue cardstock and then use this little scene with the cabin. Okay, I once again have a side folding four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. And this time I'm going to create a square window using a Hero Arts square infinity die. And I'm trying to center it there towards the top. I'll then open up my card and run it through my die cut machine to create the window. You can see I've also already stamped on some blue cardstock that uh, Northern Lights scene, and I did it once again with white pigment ink. This time I decided to glue it only on the top portion of the card so that I have a white area below it to write my personal message. I think I like this look better than the one I did in the last card, but thankfully I did two cards so I know what I'll like if I want to create more in the future. Now notice that this border die cut is too long. When I close the card, it will stick out the side. So I need to trim it a bit. You want to make sure that the die cut doesn't hang out when the card is closed. So for this one, I'm going to give it a little haircut there on the right. Just trim a little bit of it off just to make it a bit shorter. It doesn't make a big difference, but a little bit. Then I need to cut some off on the left. So I'm putting it to the right hand edge there. See how it's all the way up to the right there. And then I need to cut my die cut so it's about a half inch from the crease of the note card. So about a half inch there. I'm making a little mark here with my poker tool. It's just instead of using a pencil, it's just easier. And then I can take this to my trimmer and cut off that bit there. So basically this piece needs to be about three and three quarter inches wide and no wider. Okay, so now when I put this in the inside, see how it's about a half inch short from the crease of the card and doesn't hang off on the right. Okay, so now it's time to add to this to do the pop-up feature. So I'm going to take this and glue it onto a piece of blue cardstock. This time I'm gonna go ahead and do the fold line over on the side, that half inch flap. So I got the half inch flap there and I'm going to glue my die cut right up to the edge of this crease, but not on the flap itself. Okay, so I'm gonna put adhesive on the back of this. There are many ways you can do this, by the way, but I found this was the easiest. All you need to do is add a half inch flap on the side of your die cut, however you please. All right, so I'm gluing that right up against the crease. And then before that dries, I'm going to push my scissors in there and cut away the blue that's above the die cut into the right of the die cut. So watch, I'll just push my scissors in there, cut away that that's above the tree line, just so that it looks like it's kind of floating there when we add this. I'll cut away this little bit down here and then the part on the right. So this is nice because it allows that blue to show through on that cabin and the other little cuts in the die cut. Now it's time to add more to our little scene here. I'm just doing this on the blue paper so you can see it better than the black work surface. So I'm going to add a couple clouds here and then I'm going to add a moon. The clouds are the coordinating dies to the stamp set that I showed you earlier and the moon is part of the kit. So I'm putting adhesive on the back of those tree tops on the left and I'll have my cloud floating up there. Then I'm going to make the other cloud float above the tree tops to the right. Now notice it doesn't take much to attach these together. I'm just gluing that tiny tree top there. But since I'm using strong adhesive and heavyweight cardstock, it'll be fine. Now I'm going to take a moon that I cut from some shimmer silver cardstock I found in my scrap drawer, and I'm going to connect those clouds. So you can see how that's all held together there. Basically, you can have any die cuts you want, just have them overlap so you create the scene. 
okay, now it's time to stamp on the front of our card. So I decided to stamp, you're my moon and stars. There are many different sentiments you could do for this, but I thought this was perfect. Okay, so now it's time to attach the pop-up scene. So I have that little half inch flap sticking out on the left there. I'm going to put my adhesive on that and put a good amount too. Not too much that it squeezes out, but good enough that it won't come undone. Put it right into the crease of the card and then close it so that you see the scene when you look through the front. Now I'm going to put my phone on there as something heavy to hold it while it dries. Once again, I have a piece of cardstock that is a half inch by two and a half inches, and I scored it every half inch. You could make this bigger if you wanted to, but I like this small size. Once again, I'll glue the two ends together, and this is just forming a little cube that is great for a pop-up feature. Now I'm going to give that a little bit of time to dry. I like to give just a few minutes for all these things to dry as we go. Then on one side of the cube, I'm putting adhesive and putting it towards the end of this uh, little scene flap. Then once again, I'll put something in there to press it down just to be sure it's making good contact while it dries. While that dries, let's create a frame for the front of our card. Using the same square die that I used to create the window, I cut from gray cardstock. I then took a square die that is one size bigger, and I'm going to line that up with the negative space, run that through my die cut machine, and there we have a thin frame. It's just another way to create a frame to go around the window, and I'll just add that with liquid adhesive. Things like this add a lot to a very simple card. Okay, now it's time to attach our flap. So on the top of our cube here, I'm putting adhesive. I'll fold that cube down towards the crease of the card, towards the inside of the card. Then holding it there, I'll close the card on it and put something heavy on there while it dries. You wanna make sure this one doesn't come undone as it dries. Okay, so now I wanted to add some stars to our scene. There are star die cuts included in the sets I've shown you, but I wanted to use something sparkly. So I found these old tonic silver stars that have lots of shimmer to it. So you could use silver gems, silver sequins, whatever you have, or even little die cuts cut from maybe holographic cardstock. So I'm using my jewel picker to pick those up and put them into a little dot of liquid adhesive. Okay, so let's take a look at the completed card. Here it is in an envelope. And you see it flattens nicely, and there's the scene from the outside of the card. You can see how the layering looks really cool. It almost looks like it's a window scene here, like it, a little window shadow box. But the surprise is when you open it, it actually pops up. So think about the different die cuts that you have. You may have a few little critter die cuts you could glue together to create a pop-up feature like this. I've done a similar card design in the past. I'll link to that video here if you're looking for more ideas using different types of die cuts. All right, if you're interested in these supplies, they are linked below in my YouTube description. And here in the middle, I have a couple other videos, including the one I just mentioned, for you to check out. Thank you for spending this time with me today. I hope you're all having a great week, and we'll see you again very soon.